Okay, so hello. Uh, today I have um, this excellent lens that I'm going to show you. It's a Sigma 100 millimeters uh, macro, a fantastic lens. So this is the way it is presented. You have this box, and then when you open the box, you have a carrying bag for the lens, which is really very really sturdy, which is good. So. You're not afraid of your lens falling around or whatever. Um, and then you open this, and then the lens comes out. So this is the lens. Let me put this aside. There. Okay. So this is the lens. The the hood is huge. I guess that's for. Um, to get good contrast in, in the images. So this is the lens, this is the, the focusing ring, so you can uh, override it. Uh, meaning you have uh, auto focus and then you have, you can get the fine focusing manually. Uh, but, well, in macro, honestly, I don't use uh, auto focus because it doesn't work really well. Um, you have this limiting button as well. So that it's so uh, to make the uh, autofocus works quickly, and this mm, lens has a built-in lens. It's a Nikon mount. What we have here, we don't we don't see anywhere the uh, we don't see anywhere the the small screw to to move the focusing mechanism, uh, which is usual in the Nikons. Um, you have this tripod uh, mounting ring with a tripod mount that I put already. <coughs> so um, I have to say the lens is well made, uh, and that now uh, just to show you how it performs. Um, uh, well, I don't really care about the uh, uh, MTF. Uh, uh, charts or vignetting or whatever. Uh, I just like to check my lenses uh, with real life photos, and then uh, to do so, uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take some pictures uh, with the lens. Then I'm going to compare it with the um, reference in this focal lens. Uh, well, a long focal lens uh, in macro, which is the Nikkor 200 millimeters uh, autofocus internal focusing. Uh, yeah, that Nikon is like the best uh, in the long focal ranges for macro. But then, uh, second hand, uh, it costs like um, five times more than this lens. So uh, let's go for the comparisons. Uh, uh, first, a more of warning. Uh, um, the images are not exactly the same because this lens is 190 millimeters. The Nikkor is 200 millimeters, so there is a small difference, and then this will have an impact on the depth of field, uh, principally, and then on the orientation and perspective of the pictures. But um, the point is just to check how well this lens performs against the king. So let's go for the comparisons. So uh, we go ahead with the first comparison and that's uh, the comparison of the, uh, the close-up uh, picture of this uh, orchid that I made at home. You will notice that the orientation is not exactly the same here and this is because I had to move uh, to get the, um, the sun illumination otherwise uh, I was getting this so some shade into the flower which is not nice so I move it to get good illumination on the on the flower and then this is len this images at um, uh, of the lens wide open so here on the left we have the the Sigma here and then here on the right we have the Nikkor. Um, first thing that surprised me uh, is that uh, when showing the data uh, on the camera, 
wide open and the lens was showing f uh, 3.5 uh, whereas um, the Nikon was showing uh, 4.5 whereas uh, the wide open is um, f4 so and this is usual for macro lenses that the aperture uh, changes a little bit uh, when um, when getting close to the subject uh, whereas the sigma is not showing any change uh, is this uh, intentionally or they found a trick uh, to uh, to work around uh, this limitation of macro lenses and this I don't really know but then okay the two images look uh, very similar so they were taken like five minutes apart and and then uh, the um, the focusing was done here around the, the nose of the of the flower and then uh, was what we just can see here is that um, difference are really 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 minimal i'd say uh, the nico it's uh, a bit sharper but it's for a really 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 small margin now if we jump um, to comparable um, aperture so we go to f um, uh, 5.6 in both lenses and then uh, here we see okay again uh, a small magnification they look uh, almost identical but pictures and then uh, if we get close uh, two lens both lenses through really 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 nice as i told before the orientation and everything is not exactly the same because the focal lengths are not the same and then i had to move um, the tripod as i told you before uh, to uh, to get uh, more or less the same image uh, but then uh, for me in terms of color rendition and everything both lenses look uh, quite equivalent to me so I think the Sigma is a good deal so uh, okay there is no point in going uh, further uh, through each aperture for this picture because they look really nice so jump uh, immediately to f16 uh, to get uh, nice details of each picture uh, with both lenses and then um, oh. in this case the details in, in the Sigma are really really really, really good um, a bit less sharp than the Nikkor but then uh, the Sigma has a small advantage here is that the since the focal length is a bit shorter the depth of field uh, is a bit larger so it's able to create more um, details uh, on a bigger depth of field so this is rather interesting but uh, otherwise uh, i would say both lenses look really 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 similar so if you want a long focal lens and don't want to spend uh, um, like thirteen hundred dollars on the Nikko, i think the sigma is a very good alternative so this is a close-up i was like uh, one meter away from the flower then if we move now to uh, uh, one one magnification so i get this image this one was difficult to do uh, To get exactly the same orientation but well, I, I tried my best I didn't manage so well okay so this is again the Sigma wide open showing on the exif data and um, 3.5 whereas the Nikkor is showing uh, uh, 
I think let me check uh, 5.3 so here we see that there is a difference in the color rendition um, in both lenses in, in true macro so uh, the nickel for me looks a bit warmer but then okay this is not uh, what we're looking at we're looking at the sigma and then okay wide open we don't have enormous deeper field uh, so I have to say the focusing was done around this small thread of uh, spider web uh, and then they both look really really nice so if we go to comparable openings which is 5.6 both lenses so the image looks nice and then we check the sharpness here well looks nice on both lenses this is the only point of comparison because uh, I think uh, the the Nikon is tilted, so I'm able to see more details on the thread than uh, with the Sigma, but this is not important. Okay, and now if we go uh, to uh, really small aperture, so we have uh, f16, uh, so we can see a lot more detail. And then um, yeah the Sigma is a very 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 good performer so we can see a lot of details here nice stars huh? So for me, this lens is uh, is a very very good alternative for a smaller cost, uh, and then it produces rather similar results. Now, if we go to very very small aperture, which is f32, this is the smallest I could reach with my camera and uh, the Sigma. With the Nikkor, I was able to reach to f45. So this might be probably limitation. And then um, we see that uh, yeah, the quality we get more depth of field, uh, but then the trade-off is that. Uh, the sharpness is a bit impacted by uh, diffraction but i think um, we can probably catch up a bit with um, with some post processing and then uh, yeah we can see well in comparison again i repeat uh, this is not the point it was just to show you how it performs uh, against the nico which is the reference the nickel we see that um, it suffers a bit less from diffraction at f45 and then uh, the last thing we can check and then this is just a tele image which is always good to see because the lens can be used this way as well uh, but then i took only two really simple images Okay, now so this is the sigma, and then this is the nickel. This is the nickel, and then we can see that in tele, uh, the sigma is quite a good performer, I would say. We have a bit more details when compared with the nickel. Here I had a really really hard time getting the alignment, so 
and this is why both images don't look the same but then the pattern of the, the tiles is quite similar so uh, but as you can see the tiles the sigma i think is a better performer in uh, in tele so this is done uh, at four to get a comparison between both lenses and then if we go to f8 uh, well at uh, tele lens uh, it doesn't make much difference but uh, i think um, if you ask me i would prefer uh, uh, i'd prefer the sigma for uh, tele uses okay so this is it for the comparisons uh, for me uh, the sigma is a really good performer and especially taking into consideration that uh, the nikkor is an excellent lens it's like the reference in long focal lens and then um, we can see that the sigma is up to the challenge for about uh, four to five times uh, less price so this is it uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you another time